Hi, this is John Doe, aka Frags with the DNB Academy, and welcome to another sound recreation video. Today I'll bring you culture shocks and graphics, make it pump, amazing dance floor DNB tune, and we're gonna be focusing on one of the many pretty interesting bass shots that this tune has in the classic call and response songwriting style and yeah I'll go, I'm gonna show you uh, exactly the sound that we gonna be recreating today but first let's take a listen to the original and try to find out which sound we're gonna be making today play so yeah I think you know where we're going now let me show you what we did with it to make it pump. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's flip the screen, get into Serum, and I'll show you exactly what I did. Right, so start things off here with Serum after we lay down our MIDI. Obviously, super simple, like F note uh, with the right pattern, of course. We're gonna choose our main oscillator here and we're going to our weirder one. So we're gonna go into this thread-like space uh, all right, which is kind of cool, especially for this type of basses. Uh, all right, and we're gonna tune this like three octaves lower here, so we can start having something that sounds like this. All right, I'm gonna keep the random phase on our 100% on this one. Okay, and then we're gonna set the warp into band plus a negative, and we should, you know, set it somewhere around like 25. You see, because we start to hear this, and then. We uh we can also tune our wave table position to somewhere you know, like eight. Okay, we can even go a little bit further than with the band. You see, just you need to get that texture that it's all on. That's pretty much what this main stab resolves around. All right, then we're gonna turn on our oscillator B. Also tune it to negative three and keep the random phase just as it is. And we're gonna go into our digitals and choose the icon as kick one. Then we're gonna set the wavetable position to 86%. And on the warping, we're gonna go with sync no window, right? Which is really nice. It creates a really cool movement, sort of like in a pitched up way. It sounds like it, you know. Look. Right, it's pretty much what we're looking for is this texture. We've got pretty much it under control there. But we need to start having movement and start shipping up the sound. That's what it actually needs at this point. So we're gonna use our LFO one as our main envelope because we're gonna set this one as an envelope and we're gonna need to be kind of like precise-ish uh, when it comes to designing the shape of it. So I'm gonna go with something that it, it, it resolves on a really cool, you know, and kind of like slow attack. So it brings things into almost like a swipe direction instead of like perk, stab. Then if I add another node here uh, in between this, this point and the, the, the last one, I'm gonna keep it like, you know, just a little belly here with a, with a softer slope. So everything kind of goes in a descendo kind of way, you know what I mean? We can keep it like going steadily instead of being like abrupt. Then we obviously gonna come here and trick this again, but let's assign this to the right parameter. So level of the first oscillator, oscillator A, and set it all the way up. Same thing goes to oscillator B. And then the filter, because right now, uh, if we have something that sounds like this, you know, we're probably gonna need to make this a little slower, like two notes. Yeah, perfect. You see, we kind of already getting into the, the, the spot where the main sound is at. I think we should keep this one a little bit higher here, all right? That's cool, all right? But then we need the filter. We need the character and the filter is gonna help to bring that character to the front of the mix. So we're gonna go into our mis miscellaneous folder here, and we're gonna select formant number one, or formant one, uh, that, that's here, okay? Then we also gonna assign our LFO one to the cutoff, all right? And then we're gonna set the cutoff somewhere around like 600 hertz, and also assign, obviously, oscillator B to the filter. Now, it, you see where we're going, all right? Let's bring the resonance down and let's use the, the, the drive. 
start maximizing our sound. And now, really important part is getting this formant in 51%. It's going to pick up the right frequency we want for this bass specifically, all right? And to add just a little bit more juice to the overall sound, we're going to also assign LFO1 to the sync here, but we're not going to go like full on there. We're just going to edit slightly. So you see it starts bringing up this part of the wavetable into the sound. So another little detail to start, you know, like polishing uh, our overall patch. Then we're going to come to our noise here and also turn it on and set it to the default one, um, AC hum one. Assign our LFO one there and make it super light. So you barely can hear it. Just gonna add a little bit more um, frequency content there that's gonna allow our processing to, to make it sound better, trust me. Okay, so now that we kind of got this done, we obviously gonna come back because it's like a pretty precise sort of patch here. We're gonna come back here, you know, but let's flip the screen, get into the effects tab and start changing and adding some stuff to make it sound even better. Let's get the distortion going. Super important, uh, even though it's not gonna be like all over the place on our sound here, we're just gonna set it, you know, like 70%, but look, just get those harmonics to sound much better. Like 75% she did the trick, all right? Really nice. Now, a little bit of chorus, high pass filter on, just to, uh, you know, add a little bit of width here, but we need to bring this down quite a lot. Bring the feet also all the way down and adapt to 20 milliseconds, so it's not that fast. Okay. I think we're good with it. You see, completely winding up the sound. And then we gotta add a little bit of compression in multiband here, you know, to start getting things, you know, a bit more in the box. Really don't want the low end that much because if you notice the sound, there's like a big sub beneath this more mid rangey and high, I you know, more bright and mid rangey sound. It's kind of a layer, you know, on top of a pretty simple sub, if you hear. All right. Bringing in a little bit of the tops, like one 130%. See, so she did the trick. And so we can, you know, already bring the sound and make the sound a bit more precise straight out of Serum. So we don't have to work that much outside of it. We just gonna add this EQ to, you know, once again, get rid of some of the, the lower frequencies that might have still got there, you know, because the multiband is not gonna remove everything. So yeah, something like this. Still want to get a hold of some of those 300 hertz harmonics, but then the rest should be out. Something like this, I think. It's gonna do the trick, all right? Now, let's do a little bit of EQing and probably a little bit more multiband compression there to make it, you know, fit the mix 100% here. Let's go with it. So now with ProQ on, all we're gonna do is just fine tune and uh, pretty much make some adjustments to some harsher parts of the frequency range that I can hear on the patch. You see somewhere around here on the 500 Hertz, we could gap this up a little bit. This will bring more room to the important harmonics and the important part, which is, which are these ones and these ones around here. So we don't really need this that much. And also tame these up a bit. Right, it's more than enough. Because now we're just gonna turn on this OTT that we got here, the multiband dynamic preset from uh, Ableton. And all we got to do again is just compress this uh, in a kind of like aggressive way and make sure that we get our mids and, and especially our mids to sound a little bit more in the box, a bit more compressed. So if we set this to, you know, pretty much around here, it should be good. Now let's give a little bit more attention to the tops, but not as fast. Nice, maybe go a little bit gentler on the mids. So after applying our OTT, we can just come back to the patch a little bit 
to do some adjustments. All right. So first thing we see here, we got the level. It went like pretty much 100% here and we might not want that. So we're going to keep this oscillator a little bit quieter. See, around here, it does its job and it doesn't bother us that much. And also we might want to have this on a little bit more of the high pitched side of things, this oscillator. So we need to tune our oscillator wavetable position, but because this wavetable, just changing a value, changes the sound like abruptly from seven to eight, then nine. And this is more what we're looking for, okay? So let's also tune the band. See, and now we're getting that texture on the tops that um, the original has. And also bringing the sync, it's like 11, you know, just to make a little bit more presence of our Icon as Cake wavetable. See, this changes quite a bit. So I think keeping it around like 111 sounds really nice to me. And also increasing the, the drive here also brings those stops into the mix and flipping back to the effects we can also tune a little bit of the chorus so if we send a bit more info on the high pass see and then we compress the tops bang we got a bit more texture uh, on the overall eye end of the sound so now let's take a listen and see if it kind of fits the original which i think it will so yeah let's go so yeah this is it i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next one Peace.